So something has to change. Something has to give. I uh, visited the south side of Chicago a few years ago, and I, I met a pastor, uh, Corey Brooks. You may have seen him. He's on, on Fox News sometimes. Uh, big guy, played football for Ball State, but who is mentoring young men in his community. And when I was there, they had, um, the, the last fast food restaurant had left because of violence. I called up the head of McDonald's and I said, I want to do one small thing for this community. I want you to uh, reopen the McDonald's there. And they, they, they barely would talk to me and they didn't do it. They refused to do it. He was on television. This was like five years ago. He was on television last week and it said the last Walgreens and CVS burned. That the people who live in his community, which is a very poor community, are driving 15 miles to get their prescription drugs. Something's got to give. Now, I've talked with a group of people in Louisville, um, black, white, you name it, police, non-police, about things that you can do. And I don't have all the answers, but I am excited about this idea, and this has been talked about in other communities, that the violence isn't coming from thousands of people. It's coming from uh, dozens of people, maybe a few hundred people. You've got to arrest the really bad people and put them away. But the other thing is, is they talk about bringing in people who are who's a really bad person that commits a murder and the gang members, but bringing them in and giving them a possibility of a diversion, talking to them, giving them a chance. I've been a big believer in second chances. Anybody here have never committed a sin, please raise your hand now. We all have. And we've all done things we shouldn't have done. We all growing up, at least I made a few mistakes growing up, but there needs to be second chances. So there has been a great deal of success we've had with criminal justice reform, giving people a second chance. I do believe that there's been a disproportionate amount of young African-American men put in prison over drugs. Now there's some debate over the cause of this. Some people say it's institutional racism. I tend to think it's more complicated because I meet good black policemen on the force and aren't arresting people because they're black. But there is a problem. And I think part of it is changing our drug laws such that we don't condone this, but we try to give people a second chance. You know, when they come before the court, give them a diversion. If they haven't hurt anybody, but they've been using drugs, give them a chance to go a different direction. Get them into a work program. Get them into some kind of mentorship program. There are ways that we can do a better job with this. Kelly and I were big proponents of the First Step Act. We went and talked to President Trump about it. I talked to President Obama about it. We finally got it passed. And I was actually here in Louisville at the Urban League one day, and I was trying to encourage people to, some other Republicans to actually put the bill on the floor, and I was talking on TV, and about a month later after it passed, uh, Kelly and I were at a meeting in Northern Kentucky, and we met a guy named Matthew Charles. He was the first person released after uh, the first step back. He'd been in jail like 30 years. He'd become a minister, he'd found Christ, he was a, you know, leading a prayer group, you know, gotten his education, maybe got a college degree. And he committed a nonviolent crime, but had been in there for 30 years. He got out, and I think he's going to be a, a good man and a good part of our society. But it was the fair thing to do. I think he was in there way too long. There's still some disparities in the way we treat drug crimes between crack and powder cocaine. And it just historically was... White kids were using powder cocaine, black kids were using more crack. I don't think it is as much anymore, but there's still people in jail that have been there for 10, 20 years for using drugs that we need to get out of jail. So I've been for making more equity in that. I've been for looking backwards and trying to make it better. We had a very emotional and big thing over, you know, what happened with Breonna Taylor. But 10 years before that, I was opposed to no knock raids. And I've talked to the police. Yeah, I have people who are former policemen that work for me and I've said, Look, as much as I care also about Breonna Taylor and her family, I also care about the police. It's very dangerous for them to go in in the middle of the night. They sometimes make mistakes to go in the wrong house. But I don't think there's really a reason for us to go in in the middle of the night. I talked to the sheriffs out in uh, the countryside. They said they don't even use no-knock raids. The only people using no-knock raids were Louisville and Lexington. But the good news is this. We came together. The Metro Council mostly Democrats, but it's Democrats and Republicans, they voted unanimously to get rid of no knock raids. The state legislature did it. A Republican state legislature with Democrats helping passed an expungement law saying that if you behave yourself after five years, you can, you can get your rights back and get that excluded so you can get back to work. See, that to me, those things are so common sense that if, you know, if, 
You know, we say we're a party of family values. We want people to go back to work. Well, why not let them get rid of their records so they can actually get a job? There's a lot of good things happening. There are people here in your community who have hired people who have had records. Ultimately, though, the opportunity comes from education, though. One of the things that we've tried, though, is something called Opportunity Zones, and I'm still hopeful that that's going to help Louisville. If you see the, the thriving parts of Louisville, some of them in the city come right up against parts of the air cities that are not thriving. What we've done is said that if you're close to that area and somebody wants to put up a hotel in a non-thriving area, that if they stay there with money for 10 years, they don't pay capital gains tax, which could be an enormous amount of money and an enormous incentive. We haven't gotten that big business to locate yet, but that's what we need to do is have that creep and walk, you know, from the successful part of Louisville bigger and bigger and creep into the, the neighborhoods that aren't succeeding as much. Um, I think that could happen. These are called opportunity zones. The bottom line is, and there is some debate on this, but what I don't like seeing, and it bothers me from my perspective, and of course my perspective might not be everybody's perspective, but I don't think there's as much hatred out there as everybody says. Everybody hates each other. I just think there's so much good news and people who actually really don't consider the color of anybody's skin in our communities. I think it's a lot of that good, and it's like on TV, everything's about hate, hate, hate. Everybody hates each other. Sure, there are bad people. Sure, there's still racism in our country. But the thing is, there's also a lot of love in our country. There's a lot of people who don't care about that. I don't have all the answers. I met some young people who might have some of the answers here today. We'll see if they do. But uh, I do appreciate Pastor Stevenson. I appreciate all of you, what you're trying to do to make uh, Louisville a better place, make Kentucky a better place, and make America a better place. And I hope to be a small part of that. Thank you very much.